and the greatest. What is up, guys? We're Celeste Williams, aka the Swole Professor, here to educate you on health, fitness, social well being. Today, guys, as promised, I'm going to be taking you through a series of dumbbell exercises that you can do in order to have a full workout at home using dumbbells only. This is going to be really useful for those of you who maybe can't afford a gym membership right now, but you know, you have a rack of dumbbells and you have like a bench. Or for those of you who maybe you're out of town and you're at a hotel, and most hotels, that's all they usually have as far as their gyms. They maybe have a pull up bar, a lap pull down machine, but for the most part, you're going to have gyms. Um, in the hotels that have benches and dumbbells as well. So that's what I'm gonna be taking you through, guys. So for this, all you're gonna need is just some type of bench and then dumbbell racks. Now, as far as how heavy it goes, obviously the heavier the dumbbell rack goes, the better, but obviously the heavier it goes, the more expensive it's gonna be. That's okay. At the end of this, I'm gonna be giving you guys different ideas for workouts that you can do, whether it's like full body style, push pull legs or even upper lower and I'll be giving you different ideas of things you can do as far as your reps your sets in order to get the best workout you possibly can using dumbbells but right now what we're going to be doing is simply taking you through a series of exercises for each body part so we're going to start with legs I'm going to show you this series of leg exercises you can do with dumbbells only then I'm going to take you through a series of chest and shoulder exercises and then finish off with back exercises so with all these guys you have a great array of tools to utilize in order to get effective dumbbell workout all right guys so what I'm going to be doing as far as these movements is I'm not doing a full tutorial over each movement if there's any of these movements where you guys want me to do a tutorial over it go ahead and leave that in the comments down below I'm just gonna be taking you through these movements as quickly as possible so this video is not too long just give me an idea of compound movements and isolation movements for each muscle group so starting off with legs you're gonna want to probably start off with some type of squat so with dumbbells we're gonna do what's called goblet squats so you're just gonna take a dumbbell position your hands like so if that's comfortable for you you're gonna get in your usual squat position, chest up, and we're squatting down. Elbows are gonna be right between the knees, back up. So, that's a great movement, guys, just to get started, as well as for helping those of you who maybe aren't ready to barbell squat yet, that's a great movement to kind of help you build up to that. So, after that is gonna be different forms of various of deadlifts that we can do with dumbbells. So we can technically do a deadlift using the dumbbell. So it's going to be kind of similar to the squat in the sense of our positioning, but the dumbbell is going to be on the ground like so. I'm going to be down in this position, chest up, hips down, lock out, boom. Come all the way down with the dumbbell touch, back up, lock out. Come down with a touch, lock out. So even with this, similar to the goblet squat, but more of a deadlift variation. Now, beyond that, we have Romanian deadlifts and stiff leg deadlifts. You would do it the same way with the barbell, only you're gonna have dumbbells in each hand. So, for example, for a Romanian deadlift, we're just gonna bend slightly the knees, focusing on sticking that butt out, get that deep stretch in our hamstrings, and come back up. Coming down, and back up. For the stiff leg, same thing, we keep our legs locked out, getting that deep stretch in the hamstrings, back up. Deep stretch in the hamstrings, back up. So, those are gonna be your deadlift variations that you can do with dumbbells as well. And then, final compound that's always great, and you may even wanna start with this instead of the goblet squats, depending on you know, how you're feeling, is simply gonna be alternating dumbbell lunges. You can do walking lunges, alternating, you can do a certain amount on one leg first and the other. It's all up to you. So I'm gonna show you guys. It's just alternating. So just like the barbell lunges that you guys have seen me do before, but with dumbbells. So stepping forward, coming back. Stepping forward, coming back. Easy enough. So with that, guys, you're gonna be able to hit um, your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, all of that. Now, for isolation movements, we can do, we can pretty much do glute bridges using the dumbbell. Like I said, if you have a bench, hopefully one that's not quite as high as this, this bench is sort of high, but you guys will still get the idea. So what I'm gonna do, have my back resting on the bench, have the dumbbell right here, lowering myself all the way, coming up squeeze. Lowering, coming up squeeze, lowering, Come up, squeeze. And what that essentially is, guys, is just gonna be your glute bridge. And then lastly, now with this, you're probably gonna wanna use 
a lighter dumbbell. And we'll see how well I can set this up. May have my cameraman help me with this. But you're basically gonna be doing lion hamstring curls using a dumbbell. And what you're gonna do is set the dumbbell between your feet. So, let's see if I can set up. I'm gonna be laying in this position. Go ahead and put the dumbbell between my feet for me. From this point right here, just gonna hold on to the bench, bring it up, leg curls, using the dumbbell. Now, this is just an option for those of you who may want to hit your hamstrings a little bit more directly. It's not a necessity by any means, especially if you're doing Romanian or stiff-legged deadlifts. Those are gonna hit your hamstrings plenty. But that's it for the leg movements. All right, guys, so next I'm gonna be showing you your chest and shoulder dominant movements. So, first one's gonna be obvious, simply dumbbell flat chest press. So, for this, in position, scapula is still retracted as always. Now here's the big thing guys, a lot of people, when they dumbbell press, they come up correctly, but then they come out, elbows flared out. This is the same reason that people hurt their shoulders when they bench and they bring the barbell right to their chest exactly, instead of right below the nipple line. So what you actually wanna do is come down, tucked, like so. Then push up, boom, tucked. Just like so. And then obviously, the variations, if you wanted to, you could do, you could put a decline, if your bench allows you to do that. For decline press, for those of you who wanna work on your lower pecs more, or target that area more. And then, we can put it at an incline for incline press. Same thing, take these guys through it really quickly for those of you who, for whatever reason, have never seen an incline press before. down, getting that deep stretch, all the way up. So that's it for the chest presses for the most part. For your shoulder presses, obviously, pretty much the same setup as the bench press. You can do your seated dumbbell shoulder press. What I would recommend though, is doing it standing. Reason being, you're gonna get more bang for your buck that way. It's gonna be similar to a standing barbell overhead press, which means your core is gonna get some engagement as well. Whereas if you're sitting down, there's not quite as much core engagement with your shoulder presses. So. All we're doing, nice tuck position, coming up. Boom. Boom. And then of course, you have the seated option as well. Now, as far as our isolation movements, we can do chest flies using the dumbbells. Now with these, once again, be careful. You wanna make sure you're feeling in your chest not overworking your shoulders too much, especially the joints. So we're starting up here, slight bend in my arms, so they're not totally straight, and it's not a crazy bend, just a slight bend, coming out, and back up. Ah, squeezing at the top, I'm really focusing on squeezing my pecs together. Ah, cool. Ah, cool. Ah, cool. Now mind you guys, even though I'm giving you these isolation movements as options. If you're doing enough pressing, as far as, you know, incline, then decline, and then flat pressing, your pecs should get plenty of development from that. But for those of you who are sticklers for isolation movements, there's an option for you. Now, next you're gonna be our shoulder isolation movements. The first one, fairly obvious, is of course, our front delt raises. This is obviously gonna be the last one I would recommend to you guys, for the mere fact that if you're doing bench press, dumbbell shoulder press, any type of pressing motion, your front delts are gonna get plenty of work, plenty of stimulation. But if for whatever reason that is a lagging group for you, you can do that. Now, secondly, of course, is gonna be our side lateral raises. So from this position, you guys have seen me do this plenty of time. Making sure that our palms are facing the ground. Side lateral raises. Now, one thing with this, guys, is as we're coming up, notice I'm keeping the focus on my palms being forward. I'm not trying to twist it out too much, have the pinky going upward or anything like that, because that's gonna put unnecessary pressure on the shoulder joint. You don't wanna do that. So, side lateral raises for the lateral head of the delt, 
And then lastly, rear delts. Now there's a couple movements you can do for these. One of the obvious ones is gonna just be bent over rear delt flies. So you're gonna get in a bent over position and it's basically the opposite of a chest fly. Boom. For the rear delts, you can also pull this up to a slightly higher angle. So let's get this position right about here. Actually, you know what, let's put a little bit lower. Yeah, about right there. You can lay down on it. Same thing, bring it up, focusing on our rear delts. So that's another option, and that's pretty much gonna cover it for your chest and shoulder movements. All right guys, and to finish off is back movements. Now, with this, you don't have that many options. There's only so many type of rows you can do with dumbbells. With that being said, this is why I recommend getting some type of pull-up bar, just having your own, because combining dumbbell rows with pull-ups is still a great way of developing your back as much as possible. So, with that being said, we're starting off with, of course, traditional just bent over dumbbell row. So, getting in position, getting the full stretch at the bottom, driving it up, squeeze. And of course, however many you do on one side, make sure you do it on the other side as well. Another option you guys are gonna have, let me hop over here real quick, is bend over dumbbell rows without using the bench. So in this option, you're gonna take both dumbbells, be in a bent over position, drive those elbows up, squeeze. Just like so. And then of course, if you wanted to, you could be in a position where you're like so and still using the dumbbells for rows. So all in all guys, those are pretty much your options as far as dumbbell exercise you can do for your back. If you guys know of any others, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. I don't know everything guys. I will never claim to know everything. I'm just doing what I can to the best of my ability to share the knowledge that I have with you guys. All right guys, so. Last thing is simply some basic upper body isolation movements based off you know any weak points you may have or if you just want to hit that muscle group a little bit more. First one's gonna be pretty obvious, is of course gonna be dumbbell shrugs for the traps. Now, this is a movement that for whatever reason a lot of people seem to get wrong. You're seeing them doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like it's real simple, guys. You want your arms nice and straight, and then you're just shrugging like you don't know. Squeeze. Control going down. Squeeze. Control going down. Squeeze control going down. So that's the first one. Pretty basic, pretty simple. Then next, of course, for our biceps, we have dumbbell supinated curl. So we're coming in, getting that supination. Boom. Or if you want to work more on the outer head of the bicep, then simply do um, dumbbell hammer curls instead. Boom. 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 And then of course for triceps, guys, you're a little limited in your options for this, but one thing is going to be simply behind the head, overhead extension, using the dumbbell so we get our hands in position like so. We're just coming all the way down, all the way up. Boom. 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 And of course, with these guys, for both the curls and the tricep overhead extensions, you can do it seated, you can do it standing. It's all about what's best for you what's more convenient for you. Obviously, when it comes to things like curls and tricep movements, if you're sitting down, it's gonna make it a little bit harder, unless it's something that's like overhead, like a dumbbell shoulder press overhead extension, just because once again, that core is gonna get more engagement and that core may give on you before your triceps do. So keep that in mind. And then guys, another basic dumbbell movement that I'm aware a lot of people talk noise about, not sure why, it still works just as effectively. It's just gonna be dumbbell hit back. So. Bring it back, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And that's pretty much gonna be it, guys. That's gonna be it for your upper body isolation moves for dumbbells. Obviously, by utilizing all of these, you're gonna be able to come up with some type of decent workout. You can do a full body workout, pick two movements for each muscle group, compound movements, and then maybe one isolation movement based on what your weak points are. So for example, you could do goblet squats, Romanian deadlifts, 
then you could do direct dumbbell shoulder press, then flat chest press, and then for your back, do um, bent over dumbbell rows, and then maybe just do single arm dumbbell rows. So you have options as far as things like that. In terms of, so how should you structure it as far as your sets, your reps? Well, if you're brand new to lifting and this is what you're starting with, there's several options. You can do basic three by 10, five sets of five. Just pick a certain set and rep structure. Every time you get all reps on all sets, bump the weight up. So for example, let's say you start off with goblet squats, with 20 pounds, you do three sets of 10. If you get all three sets of 10, next time do 25 pounds. If you don't get all three sets of 10, let's say you get 10, seven, six. Next time try to shoot for at least 10, seven, seven. Build it up until you get all three sets of 10. So that's how you would do that if you're just starting off. Now let's say you're someone where you're like myself, where this is like nothing for you, you can handle this no problem. And you get to the point where maybe you go on vacation or you're at a hotel and this is all you have to work with. You can do five sets of burnout on whatever movements you're selecting. If you're on a push pull legs and let's say it's your back day, just come in, do five sets of burnout on you know the back movements as far as like the dumbbell rows and maybe the rear delt movements as well and maybe some shrugs if it's your push day same thing do five sets of burnout on the push exercises if you train full body like i do then just like i said pick one to two exercises each muscle group do five sets of each burnout just go to failures because even a workout like that guys is better than nothing at all there's no reason or no excuse to not get your workout in now if you're just gone on vacation for like say a day or two and you take a day off that's fine but if you're gonna be gone longer than that you don't want to take an entire like you know three days or a week off just because you feel like you don't have adequate equipment there's no excuses i mean heck if nothing else guys you can do some push-ups you can do something and, and don't underestimate it guys i mean heck i haven't even done a full workout i've just been showing you guys a few things and look look at that look at the punk Pump's there a little bit. It's there a little bit. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I know it's a little bit weird, a little bit unorthodox. I've never done a video quite like this before, but if you found this to be helpful or useful, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know that it helped you out. Let me know if you want me to do more videos like this over like, you know, different exercises. I know that I've kind of been slacking on the tutorials after I did the bench press ones. I haven't quite been, you know, utilizing the pump chasers gem enough to do that, but I'm gonna get back on that. So as a matter of fact, one more thing, in the comments down below, let me know what movement you guys want me to go over next. Squats, overhead press, deadlift, pull-ups, whatever movement I see the most, that's what I'll do my next tutorial video over on sometime in this upcoming week. That's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know that you did. If you did not enjoy the video, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later. Greatest.